All right, Gigux, new video. The cyberpunk anime is actually incredible. Sell me on it because the game sucked. So I guess we'll see if you could sell me on this. Maybe I'll maybe I'll watch it. Mr. Giguk, Mr. Guck. Where the fuck did this come from? Yeah, honestly, true. I did not know this was coming at all. It just came out and people started talking about it. So, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna actually watch it. Dude, he does good intros. You see, that's how you start a video, Matt Pat. That's how you make the first 11 seconds of a video freaking awesome. Okay, Matt Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing the explosion of anime in the past 10 years was bloody exciting if you were an anime fan before. Playing Sword Art Online music in the background. <laughs> love that. Four. Suddenly, this niche little medium you loved was starting to get noticed by a wider audience, and that was a good thing, because this must have meant so many more great anime that would have never been made before might just be on the horizon. The small, fan run companies we followed got an injection of money they needed. Big players were. True, except I still hate Crunchyroll. No offense. Starting to get into the game. There was so much potential for cool. True, true, look at this. Project, so That's much promise of the medium being taken to the next level. It was hectic, it was exciting. The possibilities seemed to end the medium The possibilities are the endless. Level. They even ripped off Star Wars and Sword Art Online. It was hectic. Look at it how they ripped off Star Wars so coolly. It was exciting. Yeah. The possibilities seemed endless. And what did we get? We've been preparing our whole lives for this. Why, Giga, why would you do this to me? Okay, I wanted to watch a thing about cyberpunk. I don't want to see Guardian Spice. Crunchyroll's wokeism itis disease. One thing we did get was more anime, but that didn't necessarily mean that was more great anime. The shows you wanted to watch were split across a million different streaming platforms, True. and some of the shows you were excited for had- I was about to praise Netflix for cyberpunk, and you remind me of how they botched JoJo's part six. I cry. I cry all their possible hype killed when the wrong platform picked it up. This wasn't on the fine print of the expectations we had, but every so often there comes along a project that makes me remember, all right, maybe anime getting worldwide recognition wasn't such a bad thing after all. True, have you seen Arcane? Cyberpunk. I forgive all of Netflix's anime crapisms. God damn, the random megalovania sounds. Why did I agree to do this? <laughs> but I forgive all of Netflix's cringe just because of how good Arcane is. Arcane is one of the greatest things I've ever watched. So I forgive you, Netflix. Edge Runners might be one of the most exciting collaborative ah, boom! projects I've seen in years. Coming from Studio Trigger and CD's Nuts Project Red, this was the type of project we were waiting for. The feeling that's not its actual name. For following their very successful launch of Cyberpunk 20. Ah! 1977, CD Projekt Red obviously saw potential for more stories to take place in the world they had crafted and in the process might have accidentally made one of the best things to come out all year. Yeah. Continuing this unexpected but wonderful trend of yeah. animated video game adaptations slapping harder than an Asian parent who'd just been given a bad report card. I feel like if I would have said the same thing, I would have gotten cancelled. I'm just saying. That's right, guys. I'm a real gamer. Not because I play them, but because I watch them. Yeah. Which is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Honkai Impact 3rd. <laughs> Oh, what the hell was that segue? Yeah, no, we're skipping that sponsor. I'm sorry. Hunk, I wanted to sponsor me, and uh, I made a video, and there were VTubers in the video, and they were like, no, you can't talk about VTubers in a video that's sponsored by Honkai. We don't like VTubers. And I was like, you know what? Okay, in that case, you can go stick a beam up your butt and let life continue. Yeah, true story. Use a cactus like a dildo and go sponsor somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a canon side story in the Cyberpunk 2077 universe, taking place in the future in the dark, gritty, violent, dystopian nightmare called the United States of America. I mean, Night City. David is a kid just- Ah, get it, get it, guys. Trying to survive in the city. My favorite part of Cyberpunk was when the main character, John Cyberpunk, went and punked all over the place. He said, it's punkin' time, and then punked everywhere. John Cyberpunk, look him up. He's one of the greatest characters in anime. Attending a prestigious school, being supported by his mum, despite her struggling income. Who edited this? Was this Eden? Did Eden ed edit this? Edited by this guy? I don't know him. <laughs> They're random. All right. After getting into a massive car accident, David comes. To David comes to. Good one. Ah, it's comedy, guys. I like it. I approve. I completely approve. To find his mother has passed away because she couldn't afford proper health care. Wait a minute, guys. That was a joke. That was a fucking joke. You weren't meant to take that seriously. From there on, he has to resort to a life of crime, meeting Lucy, a skilled cyber hacker, and her fellow gang members. He joins their crew, taking on missions so they can survive together in the underbelly of Night City. All right, guys. I've got a confession to make. 
I am not actually a gamer. I lied before. I don't play video games. Think you can get away? Shut up. I hadn't played Cyberpunk 2077 yet, and my only prior knowledge about it was that... The game was a little buggy, so I went into this completely blind, and while I'm sure I missed some easter eggs here and there, it did not ruin my enjoyment at all. The world of Night City is stunningly brought to life under Trigger's eyes. Neon lights illuminate the concrete jungle with a fluorescent color palette. You can smell the stench of stale piss reeking from the back alleys. Every random part- Can you though? Can you really smell the stench of stale piss? Giga, how would you know what the stench of stale piss is? Smells like oh, no, you never he's from London. Never mind. I take it all back. Obviously my bad Passerby feels like they have a story to tell I think people forgot that beyond the glitches and t-posing CD project red at beyond the t-posing That was the best part they crafted a truly vibrant world with so much potential for interesting stories to take place Edge runners might not have Keanu Reeves, but it does have this guy God, That's a lot of eyes. I do not pay you to <laughs> and the first thing he said was I Sorry. think I pay you to check the boxes off my list. Wait a minute. Is that my man Gus from Breaking Bad? But you can call me sus. The first thing any- what? Did- was Gikuk always this meme -y? Did he always put like these random memes in his videos? Is this like a newer thing? I don't know. It's one weird. will probably notice is Studio Trigger's footprint stamped all over the show. You know, as much as I like Trigger, recently when I saw Dude, it, no, is Studio Trigger's no. footprint- Dude, they're in this, they're in this super, super, ultra, mega new universe and they're using a bow and arrow. Bro, no way. Why? He used a bow and arrow. He could have, he could have used a machine gun. Dude, this is futuristic. Stamped all over the. <laughs> Shitty bow and arrow. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can call me sus. The first thing anyone will probably notice is Studio Trigger's footprint stamped <laughs> all over the show. Dude. You know. Okay, that's funny. I like it. Dude, I appreciate that he's that Netflix is being cool. I mean, I'm I'm making a video with the producer of the live action Netflix One Piece soon, and he's been really cool about it. Like he basically said to me, "Listen, it's going to be awesome." And I said, "Listen, I've se I've seen live action anime on Netflix before and they're all bad. I have no expectations for your show." And he's like, "No, my show's going to be good." I'm like, "I don't think it will be, but if I'm wrong, I'll tell you." <laughs> As much as I like Trigger, recently when I saw that name attached to a project, especially if it was being led by this man, Hiroyuki Yamaishi, I was starting to think I was watching a one-trick pony. I remember the first time- Trigger sucks, okay? Studio Trigger is way overrated. Everyone's excited because its first anime was Kill a Kill, but no, bro. Trigger's not good. Most of Trigger's anime are garbage. I'm just saying. Darling in the Franks and all that shiz. God, what was that other one that was really bad? Kiz Niver. God, that was such a bad anime. I saw Gurren Lagan. I was blown away by the sheer absurd over-the-top hype contained in it. Then I saw Kill a Kill, and I was slightly less blown away by the sheer absurd... Okay, yeah, but Gurren Lagan was Gainax. It wasn't Trigger, so... ...the top hype contained in it. Then I saw Promo, and I was puffed away by the sheer absurd over-the-top hype contained in it. And then I saw they were doing an episode of Star Wars Vision, and I was like, is there gonna be some sheer absurd over-the-top hype contained in this? Yep. There it is. Now, did Edge Runners have some sheer, absurd, over-the-top hype contained in it? Yes, but it was actually kind of muted in comparison to all that other stuff. I mean, this may look ridiculous to you, but this is just the standard driving experience in India. There <laughs> what was that line? That other stuff. I mean, this may look ridiculous to you, but this is just the standard driving experience in India. What did he... What did he mean by that? <laughs> there are still flashes of that classic bulls... Dude, my editor. Sorry, Metal Hulk, I'm sorry you had to see this, bro. I'm sorry they had to call out your people like that. No, no, no. That's just factually correct. To the wall trigger hype, but I feel like they had to restrain themselves a bit more than usual due to this being a canon story in a pre-existing universe. But because of this, they needed to find more creative ways to up the ante aside from going into space. Going into space. Going into space. True. Or my personal favorite, going into space. Didn't see that coming. And I feel like by restricting them, you got to see a whole new side shine through. Oh, for fuck's sake. This, in my opinion, is one of their best looking shows to date. The gunplay on display is absolutely insane. David has the special ability to go bullet time, creating an army of after images for every movement that he makes, which melts my mind every time I see it. But most notably, this is the first time I've seen them tackle an old school hyper violent show. And you could tell they had so much fun breaking all the shackles that usually limit them. Bodies. Look, I'm excited. I am going to watch this anime. I am excited. You are selling it. I will watch it. It's not going to be as good as Psycho Pass. I'm just saying right now, if it is as good as Psycho Pass, I will put, I will donate 50 subs to you next time you stream, Giga. Get blown apart in an explosion of bright red blood. Intestines go flying out. Bits of skull and eyeballs rain down with every shotgun blast. 
Yeah, what part of that was bits of eyeballs? Intestine. Bits of skull and eyeballs? Where do you see bits of eyeballs? Out. You see bits of eyeballs? Bits of skull and eyeballs rain down with every shotgun blast. Seeing this type of hyperviolence being done with the trigger flare was a brutally beautiful sight I didn't know I needed until now. Trigger were already the masters of giving their shows a unique visual identity, but I Dude, Little Witch Academia was ass. I feel like even here, everything was polished and sharpened to a level even further beyond. I remember the first time I booted up Persona 5. I was enamored by just how much- Gamer confirmed? Is he a gamer confirmed? Much work must have been put into his aesthetics. The striking color palettes, the battle animations, the text messages, even the individual menus. Everything down to the smallest details seemed to be meticulously crafted to fit this visual style. It was just so fucking cool, and this is the exact same feeling I get when watching Edge Runners. Every frame is oozing with a visual flair most shows could only dream of achieving. There were some scenes with so much going on, it felt like my brain couldn't process all the stimuli it was receiving. I'm not gonna lie. And I mean this in the best way, because this is a good-ass entertaining video. But he spent the last six minutes of the video describing the visuals. Is there a story here? Are the characters good? Like, what's the plot? Like, like, are there any themes that get explored? Like, is there anything aside from cool visuals? Seven minutes in and all I know about the, the show is that the visuals are awesome? I don't know, I don't know, bro, I don't know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to hear something about the show. Rule of cool. This was the rule of fucking cool, and it was so- Nice. Refreshing seeing this team's insane creativity being pushed to a level I hadn't seen before. Then we got the soundtrack. You know how in most anime you got your normal background music, then during the season finale or some shit, it'll hit you with a special insert song they've saved up just for this moment, and it's beautiful. It elevates the moment, True. and it kind of feels like it turns the scene into a narrative music video. That, that was a great scene in Demon Slayer. Love that. Yo. Yep. Cyberpunk has that for like every episode. This OC is just overflowing with such fantastic tracks that at some point I feel like they had too many to work with. There'd be a throwaway scene of just two characters talking and I'd be like, Only gonks talk down others. Shut up for a second. Can we turn this music up? This song's kind of a banger. From synthwave to metal to electro to fucking reggae, so many scenes felt like I was watching a stylistic music video. It was like I was watching Fooly Cooly all over again. And then there's the writing. So you guys are cyberpunks, aren't you? Oh, they're mobbing! He's going full mob! He did become more meme than he used to be. There was no way he would have made a joke like that five years ago. He is literally embracing the memes with age. This is worse than the sus sus meme from before. He said the thing. Out of everything, this is probably the least strongest aspect, but I'm only least strongest is not correct English, sir. Saying that because everything else was absolutely stellar. Sure, there was some- I'm such a grammar Nazi, it's unbelievable. Awkward pieces of dialogue here and there. I'm built different. Bro, I'm a different- Does it actually say- No! Does he say I'm built different in the actual show? Oh. Absolutely stellar. Honey, sure, there were some baby. awkward pieces of dialogue here and there. I'm built different. Bro Honey, sweetie, baby! From a different breed of what I should tell her. But honestly, everything was solid and did what it needed to do. I've seen a few complaints saying that there wasn't enough runtime and it kind of felt rushed, but I didn't get that feeling at all. To me, it didn't feel rushed. It just felt dense. This is 10 episodes, packed to the absolute brim. From start to finish, the series rarely gives you a chance to catch your breath. Shit's constantly going down, situations are always evolving, and while it would have been nice to have an extra episode or two with a bit of downtime here and there, never once did it feel like a major story story beat wasn't earned. And yet- What is the story though? He didn't tell us the story yet. Maybe he doesn't want to spoil it. I don't know. But it kind of looks like visually, it, the presentation was amazing. Th that's really what I'm getting out of this video, mostly. The presentation is insanely good, but everything else, either he doesn't mention it or he says the writing is bad. Dude, he said the writing is bad and he said I'm morbing in this video. He said I'm morbing and then he roasted the writing of Cyberpunk. Said, oh yeah, Cyberpunk, they said it's built different. I'm starting to morb! <laughs> Yet, even through everything, they still found time to make a standout episode. Episode 6 might be one of the best episodes of anime oh. I've seen in years. Oh, that's high praise! That's high praise! From the opening second, something feels off. The air feels heavy. You find yourself being on edge. Everything is dr <laughs> Get it? Edge runners? Find yourself on edge? Morbing time? It all comes together. Comes draped in an air of unease, and you can't put your finger on exactly why. Like you're standing in the eye of an unseen storm. Editor, can you do that thing where I said by comes, just like dun, 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 like the, the way he did it where his me, you, you know what I'm talking about. And what follows <laughs> is a 20-minute psychedelic trip down into insanity that simply left me speechless by the end. It was an absolute masterclass of direction and cinema, and it's episodes like this that remind right. me why the medium of animation is so fucking incredible.
even with a shorter episode count, it didn't affect how invested I was in everything. It's been a while since I've seen an ensemble that left such a big impression on me so quickly. Everyone feels memorable without feeling like they're just a walk- Except for this guy. Complete throwaway character that I'll never think of again, especially not in Nightmares. Okay, maybe in Nightmares. ...trope. From looks to personality to attitude, each character is totally distinct from one another and have this group chemistry that's infectious. May Attitude. Each character is totally distinct from one another. Where, where does that even... Th does she have like a little hole there for cigarettes in her little mask thing? ...another and have this group chemistry that's infectious. Main walks in as the charismatic father figure of the group. David's that eager younger brother. Rebecca was one of the more minor characters and yet with just a few scenes, she was able to leave a stronger impression than most characters do with hours of screen time. Hey David, my man, what's going on? What? It's series like this that shows you don't need hours of backstory to get attached or like a character. Everyone felt like they were a part of this dysfunctional family and there would be a gaping hole without them there. If this family feels better than the fairy tale family, I will go to Gigux. God damn it, Megalovania random sounds, you're killing me! Don't remember what I was saying at all. Totally went in, I'm completely out of my mind. I have no idea what I'm talking about. And you get just as emotional when some of the major events happen. Watching this reminded me of the feeling I got when watching Cowboy Bebop. I didn't need Spike, Faye, or Jet's backstory to get attached to this crew. I already was way before their respective episodes because it was just a pleasure to spend time with all of them. You never wanted their journey to end, but you knew it had to eventually. And when it does, you're left with this bittersweet feeling of emptiness, knowing that you've had to say goodbye to your time with them. You're the guy who jumps into the fire to rescue someone. Anyone. Even when you know you're gonna get burned. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is an example of what Bruh, happens- I'm gonna watch this show. It's 10 episodes. Apparently, visually, it's great. I'm gonna watch this show. I'm gonna watch this show. And when it's not as good as Psychopaths or Cowboy Bebop, I will buy myself an ice cream. When you give a team gone mad with creativity the resources to do what they want to do. This is what it's like watching a show where every- Dude, we need a really gory Netflix Berserk adaptation. It's the one thing I want Netflix to actually do. Like, Netflix, you're doing great here. Arcane was honestly one of the greatest shows I've ever watched in my life. There's- this is not gonna be as good as Arcane. If this is as good as Arcane, Cowboy Bebop, or Psychopaths, I will shit. Yes, that's a threat. I will shit! single person working on a project gives a shit. You can feel the love and excitement emanating from every single second of this runtime because absolutely no one half asked it. Everyone brought their A game, not a single person phoned it in. It's as much a passion project as it is a promotional piece for a gaming franchise everyone had already written off. This was the project we were promised when anime started to get more recognition globally. No, we were never promised anything. We were just very entitled bastards like every single other person on the internet. Let's acknowledge that fact and move on with our lives. The prospect of some of the most talented names in the the niche medium of anime we followed, getting to go wild with some of the biggest names and franchises from a totally different medium was meant to give us more shows like this. And I hope that this isn't just the exception, but the standard for future collaborative anime projects to come. I'm excited. Bravo, guys. I'm excited. God, the music does slide, damn. Not a single T-pose, 0 out of 10, worst adaptation of all time. That was a great video. I am gonna watch Cyberpunk, and I will let you know my thoughts, but it's not gonna be as good as Arcane, Cowboy Bebop, or Psychopaths. It's not. It won't be, there's no way. And if it is, I will shit. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.